Hi guys, so today is April 13th and a lot of this video was filmed a long time ago, some of it February, some of it March. Some of the information is outdated, but I give you disclaimers throughout the video. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. I am obviously not the CDC, the WHO, a doctor or anything like that, so please do your own research and don't just blindly follow what I say. This video is split into four parts and I'll write them right here and I'll put timestamps down below. Enjoy the video. COVID-19 is hitting us hard right now. We're in a global pandemic. Everyone's self-quarantining. The virus started off in China. I was in Hong Kong for most of it, so you can kind of see how I lived. So on the 23rd of January, we um, broke off from school to celebrate Chinese New Year. We had a two week holiday. No, today is the first day of the year of the rats. Yeah, and I got <laughs> these. <laughs> and it was all gonna be fine, it was after Mox. The first day I went to Hong Kong, I didn't even wear a mask out because I thought like, it's fine, like there's no need to, I just wore it on the train. As like time progressed throughout that holiday, like we would start getting more and more careful about things. So we'd always wear a mask outside, start changing our clothes when we got home, um, washing our hands when we got home and sanitizing our phones when we got home. Just like disinfecting a bunch of stuff when we got home outside after you touch your mask you have to like use hand sanitizer and we started bringing like bags to put our masks in and we started like trying to buy lots of masks because we didn't have that many left it was starting to get kind of more intense but then we got an email from school near the end of i think it was like the end of the first week of the holiday we got the email saying that we would have another week of holiday but not like holiday it was like online school so school would have started but we would just be doing it from home so we got an extra week of holiday so i stayed in hong kong um and then throughout that week they were like okay we're gonna postpone um school until 2nd of march bear in mind it was like beginning of february we would have a month off school fine we had a start date we just had to wait until the 2nd of march but then we got an email again saying that school would not open on the 2nd of march and that it would be suspended until further notice and they would give us three weeks to come back from whatever country we were in and then have two weeks of self-quarantining in guangzhou today is March 19th, we won't be starting school until April something and school was supposed to end April 29th before we went on study leave for A-levels and I'm in year 13. While I was in Hong Kong, I had a few lessons. So in the first week, we had like a Skype lesson with my biology teacher. A few weeks later, we had this Zoom meeting with all of year 13 and it was like with all the teachers and we just had a catch up of everyone. After that meeting, like we had a big WeChat call thingy and it was so fun. It was just like our friends. I just got to like catch up with my friends and see their faces and talk to them and stuff. So it was really fun. I did a lot of work at home. It was, it felt like mostly biology, but there's also like lots of stuff to do for French. I had to film my monologue for drama at home. I was like stressing about that because I didn't know like where I would do it, but I found a place to do a podcast for French. So I had to record myself speaking about social media. So yeah, I just did a lot of work at home. I also, when I felt very stressed, I would just paint because I'm very glad I brought my paints to Hong Kong. I had lots of instances where I felt so overwhelmed and I just needed a break. So I started painting and I love painting and I'll put pictures here so you can see. We cooked a lot at home because like I usually never cook at this house. Our kitchen is kind of small and we don't have all the resources we need. Like we didn't have a toaster so I had to like cook my bread on a pan. Um, we also like cooked pasta and stuff and like noodles and I don't know, we just did like a lot there. And we also watched a lot of movies. I watched True Lies. I watched Day After Tomorrow, Kindergarten Cop. We watched Avengers 1, 2, 3, and 4. We watched Captain America 3. We watched Iron Man. We watched a lot of movies. And I really enjoyed watching those movies because like I rarely ever watch movies at my own house disclaimer when i was in hong kong we didn't do complete social distancing we just tried to stay home most of the time we were still allowed to go out as long as we had a mask on bear this in mind when you watch this next bit i also went to sai kung sai kung is like this kind of more rural countryside area but it's like still pretty busy it has this like view of the sea and we like went to walk there and ate Cali Max and it was really good. I had good tacos. That's pretty much it for like what I did. 
Okay, so in this next bit, I got a few of my friends to answer some questions about what it was like in their country while the coronavirus was happening because we were all stuck in different countries at the time. Just another disclaimer, these clips were from so long ago, I just took months to edit. So a lot of them are from February back when the virus wasn't as bad and it wasn't even a pandemic yet. So bear that in mind. Hi guys, so I'm going to be answering a few questions. Hello, my name is Shania and I'm Eunice's friend and she wanted us to answer some questions. So I'm in India right now, I'm in Jaipur and there were three cases of the virus reported in the middle of January. All of them three recovered and the state I am in, Rajasthan, has no cases. So essentially I'm safe and no one's wearing masks outside. At the moment, I'm stuck in the Philippines and I'm not sure I'm not sure when I'll be going back to Phil to China because um, there's a travel ban, so it's a bit harder for me. Not a lot of people have the virus. For sure, there hasn't been a lot. There's probably like one or two. People do not wear masks out, but when I was at the airport arriving to the Philippines, I definitely saw some people wearing the masks. Do I have to stay home? I do have to stay home. Well, no. Actually, essentially, I don't have to stay home. I can't really go out alone here in the Philippines, which kind of sucks. But on the weekends, I do go out with my cousins and stuff. I'm in China, so everyone is wearing masks. Every time you go out, uh, you get your temp temperature checked. Everywhere you go, any restaurant, cafe, shopping mall you go into, everyone's taking it very seriously, but also very safe, I think. I think it's been handled pretty well. There's so much uncertainty revolving around the situation, like you don't know. Like we have no idea what's going to happen, we don't know what the next steps are, if it will get any worse or if it will get any better, and also it's stopping us from doing a lot of our normal day things. It just makes it much more harder for us to know when we'll go back and how how we'll proceed towards our final A-level exams. So yeah, I genuinely feel really frustrated sometimes. I don't have my space here. Anybody comes th through the door any second and I don't know what to say. In Guangzhou, I had my own space. I was in my own home, in my own room. I'm kind of sad. I really miss my best friends, my friends, my boyfriend. I miss being surrounded by people. I miss school, essentially. Sometimes it's a lot of work, like a lot, a lot of work. And it's really stressful because I'm kind of like, how do you expect me to do all of this in this amount of time? It's fine, I'll survive. Online schooling itself isn't like too bad. I mean, you can take your time to go through things and everything, so but it is a bit annoying not having the teacher there, but the teachers are doing everything they can to help us, which is fantastic. Um, I don't. <laughs> I text my friends every day. It's good that I have people who relate to this or else I would have lost my mind. I'm not sane. I go really crazy because like I said, I'm stuck at home the whole entire week. I don't keep myself sane. Just ask my boyfriend, I tell him everything. I think that he thinks I'm pretty crazy now. Talk to my friends every day. Talk to, like, I still have my parents around, so they're pretty fun people, I guess. And just doing schoolwork, you, you find that you the day goes by really quickly because we got a lot of work to do. The one thing I miss most is my best friends. I miss them so much. And I miss my city. Ugh, I feel so homesick. I guess just being at school around my friends, like normal things, like seeing them every day and just coming home from school and relaxing and not having to like plan your whole day out around your schoolwork. I guess I just miss the normality of the whole thing. And the hardest part about this situation is the uncertainty that relies beneath it. You know, you don't know how it's going to happen, when, when things are going to happen. You're just unsure about the entire situation in general. I'm trying to stay positive, <laughs> but sometimes it just doesn't work and I feel so mentally tired. I have people around me physically that don't understand what it feels like to be in my shoes. Everyone's like, oh, we got an extra holiday, you know, you should chill. Like, no, that's, that's, that's not how it works. I am in my last year of school and I've never been stressed more than I have during this holiday. 
I just genuinely want to go back to school in my booth, make coffee in the kitchen, be with my best friends, and that's all I want. Being stuck in a country when you want to be in another country with your friends and family. Well, I haven't seen my boyfriend in six weeks at this point, and that's pretty hard. I haven't seen any of my friends in six weeks. I think the hardest part is I don't know when I will see them, but like you just hope that as every day goes past, the situation gets better, and that you know, hope that it's gonna be soon. You hope that they'll send out the email saying school's on in three weeks, and so I guess it's just a lot of hoping and being positive. I know that India is my home and it doesn't feel like home anymore to me. First of all, I cannot I cannot survive without my best friends. Second of all, the homesickness that I get for China, I genuinely miss it so much. Like I will I'll start crying right now, but I'm not going to do that. Genuinely, I feel really homesick and China will forever be my home. I've been there for 13 years. I realize how special my friends are. How special my life was in China. China is not a bad country, even though a lot of people might think that people from outside China who's never really been there and who's only heard about China in the news. That's my home and I've never been mistreated in China. I realized that I should be more, that I should have been more grateful for what I had in China. And I definitely will be more grateful the next time. I guess I've realized that I can do and learn by myself. I don't need someone telling me exactly what. I have the resources myself. I realized that you can make the best out of any situation. I got to spend three weeks in Australia, so I got to see more of my family and got to spend time with my cousins, which was awesome because I love them. I got to see more of Australia, which was great. And then I also got two weeks in China, uh, Thailand, which was awesome. It was really good. I met new people. You know, I got to sit and do my work next to the beach. And I realized that there's always a positive in the midst of everything and that you just have to, you know, keep your head high and just keep going because otherwise things just get depressing. If you were waking up every day and thinking, this is my life, it's shit, then you wouldn't be productive or successful as you are. Um, but I just wanted to end this video with like talking a little bit about the situation and I know every single YouTube video in your subscription box is about quarantining, self-isolation, coronavirus, anything like that but I just wanted to talk about it from my point of view, me being in Asia it, the situation is looking so much better here and it's weird to think about because it's only just starting to get bad in the West like in Europe and in America it's kind of weird to see because I've lived through all of this quarantining self-isolation thing already and now it's becoming like a big thing in the media and like every social media post I see is about quarantine I've basically already self-quarantined for over a month it wasn't exactly self-quarantining because I did go out, like there's this little mall beneath my house so I go there very often to like eat and buy food and stuff so it wasn't exactly self-quarantining but I also didn't go any further than that most days It's just weird how this virus has been so... like it's really showed the xenophobic and racist sides of people and I'm not really gonna get into that but it's just like... like it's so weird that this aspect of people like lives inside them and when this virus comes out it like shows and it comes out and it's just like so insane I can't even believe it and it makes me so scared to go out into like the real world being like Chinese also I wanted to talk about the attitudes of how Asian countries dealt with the spread as opposed to people in the west and I know there's like no right way or whatever if you see the attitudes with people in China for example they lock down entire cities I don't know which one is better because it's only gotten to the west like recently the attitudes are just so different like people in Hong Kong are so scared of the virus and they like just wash their hands and like hand sanitizer and like have their mask on at all times Disclaimer, I do not speak for everyone in Hong Kong, especially this next clip. I'm just showing you what I did and my habits in my household. So bear that in mind once again. I've come home and now I need to like change my whole outfit. When I come home, take this bad boy off, wrap it up in one of these, hang it, and then maybe later if I'm still gonna go out, then I'll have to rewear it. Then I'm gonna wash my hands. For 20 seconds the attitudes are so different and the posts i see on instagram like obviously i'm not in the us so i don't know what it's like there it's just such a big difference in attitude people are like oh it's just the flu like i'll be fine like no one thinks like that over here it's so weird to me to think that way and 
if you're self-isolating right now, just think about the people in Wuhan who have isolated for so long. They couldn't go out and they were scared to go out because they were in the epicenter of the outbreak. Just think about those people and how they felt during that time. And as of 8th of April, Wuhan ended its lockdown officially. So there's always a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. This is only temporary. And if we like work together, we can limit the spread and avoid unnecessary deaths. I don't know. I don't know if I said that well enough, but I've been talking for 20 minutes straight and my voice hurts, so. So yeah, stay safe, do your research, stay at home as best as you can. Please stay safe, please be considerate of other people, and I wish you all the best. Happy quarantining. <laughs>